Hello, welcome. Today we are going to start talking about making our own node and our own code. We'll start with the workspace and work our way down. So a couple things are different in ROS2 than ROS1. Each, ob each computer or entity or system that's interacting with the ROS network is considered a participant. So this, this virtual machine here would be a participant in the ROS network. Now, inside participants, participants can have different nodes. So that's where we're going to be building most of our code. In order to make our own, our own nodes, we're going to make our own work, uh, workspace first. So I actually have a, I'll make one. Actually, let me reuse this one. So I'm going to remove class underscore ws, nothing there. What we're going to do is we're going to make a directory. Now in Linux, you, can, you don't have to use command line for this. You could use your file explorer and go and create the directories like I'm doing. Um, if you're in Linux, it's just as easy to make a directory. So we'll call it class underscore ws. We create an empty directory. So now I go cd for change directory, the class w underscore ws. It's empty. We need to create one more file so our one more folder, mkdir, and src for source. Now we're going to build our workspace. And we can simply do that by call con build. If you're using the Linux virtual machine, you will probably get this little warning. Well, you won't get a warning yet, but you will get a warning that pops up. As long as it's a warning and not an error, everything's fine. So you see up here, it's green. It says, OK, it's been successful. Everything's good. What this does for you is it creates a, a workspace that you can have multiple packages in. Now it's important you understand the difference between packages and workspace. The workspace, you will do all your Colcon builds on this level of directory. All of your packages will go inside this, direct this SRC directory. Now, don't get confused. Each package will have its own SRC directory or might have its own SRC directory. So don't get caught up, caught off guard by that. This install path is how you're going to source uh, your this workstation so ROS can run your packages. We'll do that in a moment. But apart from those two things, we're really not going to, there's nothing else that's going to happen in here in this directory. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to source and it's obviously empty. This is where all of our packages are going to go. So what would be a fair quiz or test question is if I give you a directory structure, you can identify that this is the package folder where all the packages go. Now we're going to make our own package. If you're following along the tutorials on ROS, uh, they import one from git you can you're welcome to do that so but we want to make our own package we're going to do ros2 package create build type amint underscore python because we're going to be using python and then we're going to give it our package name so we're going to call it first package now remember when we talked about ros2 run you have to specify the package and then the executable. We can also specify a node or an executable. So we'll say node dash name and first node. So you don't actually have to do this last portion with node name first node, but this will give us a template that we can kind of look at and see how we add nodes to our package. Again, this is going to happen inside the source directory of our workspace. If you need to pause the video, please pause the video. And you can also specify the license. It's given on the, on the ROS2 website tutorial if you want. I'm not going to worry about it. You'll see here that it created a bunch of folders and some different things we have to look through. Um, but if I to ls and now I have a folder called a packet a folder called first package and this is my package so I go to first package cd first package 
Now you'll see I have a subdirectory first package. This is where my Python scripts are going to go. The other two things that are very useful at this point is we have setup.py and we have package.xml. We're going to talk about both of these in a moment, um, but just keep that in mind. If I go to first package, again, you'll see I have first node.py. Now in ROS1, you would have to make this an executable. You don't actually have to make this an executable. Let's see what they give you for boilerplate code. It's not much, and we're going to definitely use our own templates here in a bit. But first node.py, gedit, first node.py. If I want to keep my command prompt, I can do and sign, so I run it in the background. And this is what they give you. So again, it's not much. Uh, for those of you who are new to Python, this is a global function, something that you would might see, say, in C. So the function is outside of a, of a class. And Python uses tab or index or spaces. So this is going to be high from first package. And then this is saying, if I'm running this from the command line, then this will be the name of this instance will be main, and then it will invoke my function main. We're not actually going to be using this because we'll be running it through ROS2, and I'll show you why in a moment. So this is the boilerplate code. So let's go cd space dot dot, cd space dot dot, one more time, and we're going basically back to our workspace. Now we're going to do Colcon build again. Now it is different in ROS2, you do have to build for Python. Normally you wouldn't have to build for Python, you could just change the script and run it, uh, but you do want to build for Python as well. It's actually a little cleaner. We should probably get a, yeah, so we get a little error here. Again, for if you're using the virtual machine, don't worry about this. As long as it says um, warning, you're okay. Now, if I source, you know, well, we haven't talked about sourcing yet, but if I source my workstation, like, or workspace, like so source dot forward slash for current directory install setup dot bash, I can now run my package. So I can do ROS2 run. It wants my package, so we'll say first and hit tab. Notice that tab completes. And if I hit tab again, I get first node and then the default prefix, which we don't care about. So now I can so I can run first package and first node. Notice I'm not running first node.py, and I will show you why in a moment. Run it, it says hi from first package, so we know that it is in fact running. All right. Now maybe we want to add another script. So you have a workspace which can have multiple packages or nodes. Usually each script is its own node. So we have a we have a package here. We can have multiple packages if we want, but maybe each package can have multiple executables or multiple nodes. So let's add a new Python script to our first package. We're going to go to CD first package cd first package again back to where that first node.py was and now we're going to do gedit and we'll say second node second if i could spell it second node.py and then pretty much copy the same idea what we had in the first one print um, flow from the second node By the way, when you're writing Python files, either use tab or space. Do not mix the two. So either tab or space. So Nothing really profound with our code here. Again, if we're running it from the command line, it'll print from hello second node. 
and we're going to define our main function as hello from second node. That in itself is not really odd. There should be, there should be nothing surprising about that right now. Now here's the part that's a little different. So I have this second node.py, but remember we didn't call first node.py. What do we call? We call it first node. So if I go to set up, if I gedit this setup.py, so I go up one level to the package folder itself and I gedit setup.py, you'll see right here we have entry points for controls console scripts and we have a label first node and then we have first package dot first node colon main meaning what package what executable and what function to enter at so here I can give it a completely different name than the script so we're gonna call it we're gonna call it something completely different I'll call it dice pub equals uh, first package, it's still in the same package, second node colon main. Okay, so again, uh, our script name is second node.py.py, and it just knows because it's, we're using this particular style of package that this is going to be a Python file. And inside our Python file, we're going to enter at function main. Don't think we need to do that. So we're going to save this. Now, again, this is in setup.py, which is inside my package directory, not the uh, subdirectory that had the scripts. Save that. Close that. Go back to our workspace. And then you call it can build. So ROS2 run, first package. And now I have, if I hit tab, I have first node and I have dice pub, even though I never made a script called dice pub. So I can run dice pub and it says hello from the second node. This is our own script. So this is <clears throat> how we're going to go about adding nodes to our own package. When do you add a new node to a package versus add your own package? You, you have to kind of design that one out. A package should be designed for a single thing. Maybe it's a specific type of robotic architecture. Maybe it's a specific sensor. Um, maybe it's a specific simulator interaction. So you don't want to have a you don't want to have a package for every individual script, but you don't want to lump too much into one package. For this class, you can use the same workspace because it doesn't really make sense to have a different workspace. All right, one more thing to talk about. We go ls. We go back to our uh, ls source again. We're in our workspace right now. Now we go back to our package. Is the other thing here is package.xml. So we are going to add some stuff here. And what we're going to add right here is a depends. Now I was able to get this to compile without adding this, but I have seen it work the other way. So this is just being formal about it. Depend here we're going to add all of our different messages which doesn't make a sense right now uh, be, these are interfaces and what ROS2 calls interfaces and say we want standard messages and then we are going to have uh, geometry messages And finally, we're going to have sensor messages. These are 
the primary messages we're going to use for the class, you may need to import a or add a, another category later on. But right now, this these are the messages that we're going to be primarily using. Most of ours will be the standard messages, sensor messages, and then our geometry message will be basically for the robotic twist command. So we'll save that. Close that. Again, this is in package XML. Once again, inside the package folder itself. Now, if you are making your own message, you will need to specify where that message is here, or you'll need to specify that message library here as well. We'll probably, if I get to the server client tutorial, we'll talk about that. Close that. Go back up. Nothing should change just to make sure we haven't broken anything. Let it run through. So it works. Uh, again, we have that warning. We can ignore that warning. ROS2 run. First package. First node. Gives us high from first package. And second, and then um, dice pub. Hello from second node. So now everything's still working. Should you have messed up the setup setup.py or something and you're getting some weird garbage here, after you fix setup.py, you can do calcan clean workspace. You can also do clean package and specify the individual package. Hit yes. And then calcan build again after you fix setup.py and that will remove those weird or any junk executables that tab complete is showing you. So that concludes our video for creating our own package and creating our own workspace. Please make sure you understand this and try to commit as much to memory again kind of using that Bloom's taxonomy you want to be able to apply all of these concepts further on in the class. So you want to make sure you understand everything here up to the level of application, and then we're going to move forward later on in class. Thank you.